Hi, Gene Sherrard here. Welcome to our new online-only feature, Seattle Now and Then 360. Each Now and Then column is accompanied by a 360-degree video, which we invite you to explore while listening to an audio recording of the column itself. Quick note, the Then photo is positioned directly above the Now location. This week, bolstering a booming city by transforming its landscape. Here's Clay Eels with the story. For those who might doubt the potential for documentary photography to enter the realm of art, we submit this stunning panorama, looking north toward downtown Seattle in 1916. Elements of this are expressive, ephemeral, even ethereal. This is, in part, because two beloved and glowing touchstones of our past, the Smith Tower, far right, completed in 1914, and for decades fondly known as the tallest building west of the Mississippi, and Sears Roebuck Tower, second from right, completed in 1915, becoming the Starbucks Center in 1997, take a back seat to Seattle's rapidly evolving industrial backbone on the splayed flats of the lower Duwamish River. It's a plain that we now call Sodo. We see no people, but evidence of their existence abounds. The chief subject, barely afloat in the foreground, is a small, sturdy freight boat, which the Webster and Stevens photographer might have showcased to symbolize an even earlier time when seafaring was the primary mode of commerce and connection for a city defined by its water. Today, maritime remains a robust force, competing and collaborating with cars and trucks, trains and planes. But here, the lonely vessel stands nearly marooned by the ebbing of the tides and the flow of profiteering that sought to bolster the booming city by transforming its landscape. What was once a mass of muddy marsh from West Seattle to Beacon Hill was being relentlessly filled in, starting 20 years before, with the remains of the downtown regrades, as well as from the straightening, widening, and deepening of Seattle's only river, named for its native Duwamish tribe, and the creation of Harbor Island. Thus was the city's typical cloud cover increasingly mixed with plumes of pollution. Affirmation of this industrial bustle is embodied here by northern Pacific tracks, one full of cars, the other full of weeds, entering from the southeast, with some tracks curving right to the north to the Stetson and Post lumber mill marked by sprays of white smoke. The mill had its beginnings in 1874 and relocated from Dearborn Street in 1915 to its east waterway site. Moving left to the west, we also see two massive freight storage terminals at Hanford and Lander Streets. Stretching farther west, this spectacular vista reveals the busy Barton & Company, packer and distributor of Circle W mutton, lamb, ham, bacon, and byproducts. Its slogan was, Eat less, but eat the best. So why is this ex-swamp called Soto? The contentious origin, hilariously detailed in Dan Raley's fine 2010 history book, Tide Flats to Tomorrow, boiled down to geography. It means south of the dome. What dome? The kingdom, which stood from 1976 to 2000 on the site of today's Century Link Field. Did we say ephemeral? In our then caption, what might appear to be a mast atop the foreground boat in this 1916 photo is actually a sort of crane, says Jim Wheat, president of Ballard-based Captain's Nautical Supplies. In our now caption, this rooftop photo shows the 1962 Space Needle, the downtown skyline, Port of Seattle cranes, and Spokane Street Viaduct, all adding present-day context. Even CenturyLink Field and T-Mobile Park peek out beneath the Smith Tower, and in the foreground, instead of bereft docks and scattered ponds, is the warehouse work of Compton Lumber 
and Rainier Cold Storage.